All praise to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. And peace to everyone joining us on this program. I'm Robert, and it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. We're going into part two of the return of the Levitical priesthood. Now, I know that sounds strange to some people, but as always, we go through the scripture, let the Bible speak for itself, and we'll get a, a clearer understanding. So this is return of the Levitical priesthood, part two. And we left off in Hebrews, so that's where we're going to pick up right now. Hebrews chapter 7. And let's pick it up at verse 11. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 11. When you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. And therefore perfection whereby the Levitical priesthood, mm -hmm. for under it people receive the law. Yep. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek mm -hmm. and not be called after the order of Aaron? Go ahead. For the priesthood being changed, there is made necessity of change also of the law. Yes. For if he whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, mm -hmm. of which no man gave attendance at the altar, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, mm -hmm. which is the tribe of Moses, spake nothing concerning priesthood. Right. And if it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, mm -hmm. there ariseth another priest, right. who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, mm -hmm. but after the power of the endless life. Mm -hmm. For he testified that the art of priests forever... And after the order of Melchizedek. Yes, now drop down. Let's drop down to verse 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Mm -hmm. And they truly were ma uh, many priests. Mm -hmm. Because they were not suffered to continue by the reason of death. Mm -hmm. But this man, because it's continuing uh, ever, hath the unchangeable priesthood. Right, because Levites die. Humans die. But Christ die no more. So go ahead. That's all that meant. And truly, um, and they truly were many priests, a whole lot of them, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. The reason why they could not continue is because, you know, Levites, you know, they died. They were humans. OK, but this man, because he continued forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. OK, so he is the high priest. In fact, uh, Christ, uh, the Mashiach, is the high priest right now for us at the right hand of the father right now. Go ahead. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come into God by him, mm -hmm. seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. That's exactly what he's doing right now. Go ahead. For such a high priest became us, mm -hmm. who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from the sinners, mm -hmm. and made higher than the heavens. Yes. Who needed not daily as those high priests mm -hmm. the offer up sacrifice, mm -hmm. first for his own sins, uh -huh. and then for the people's. Mm -hmm. For this he did once mm -hmm. when he offered up himself. Okay, so what did I say earlier? See, that's the difference between the priesthood that we're under right now, after the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood that we're under right now, our Messiah's priesthood, because the Levites had to offer sacrifices daily, okay? And then particular annual sacrifice and things like that. But they had to offer various sacrifice daily, Okay, but Christ didn't have to do that. He did it once, and that's good enough for all the sacrifices. Okay, so he said, who needed not daily, he didn't have to do this, needed not daily as those high priests, as the Levites. Okay, he didn't have to do that to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins. And that's another thing that they had to do. Okay, so if I, if I were a Levitical priest and you came to me and you needed me to offer a sacrifice I need to make sure that my house was in order first I need to offer a sacrifice for myself and my family then I can offer a sacrifice for you because I had to be purged from my sins I had to be without spot spot or blemish first then I can offer unto the Lord a sacrifice for you okay that's how it was before okay and then for the peoples for this he did once when he offered up himself. 28. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. Mm -hmm. But the word, give me one second, got turn page. Mm -hmm. But the word of the oath, mm -hmm. which was since the law, mm -hmm. maketh the son who contricated forevermore. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go on over um, to Hebrews 10. Okay. Next, uh, go up a chapter or two. We're in. Seven, so go up three chapters, chapter 10. Okay, chapter 10. And let's uh, start at verse 19, if you will. Chapter 10, verse 19. Go ahead. Having therefore, brethren, 
boldness to enter the holiness of by blood Jesus mm -hmm. by a new living way which he hath consecrated for us mm -hmm. through the veil that is to say his flesh yes and having a high priest over the house of God mm -hmm. let us dry near with a true heart and full assurance of faith mm -hmm. having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscious and our bodies washed with pure water yes let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering yes for he is faithful that promise. He promised he's going to give you hold fast to the profession of your faith. You take hold of this comp, uh, there's this covenant, and he will keep his word. Okay? He will keep his word. Okay? For he is faithful that promise. The same one who promised it, he is faithful to do it. 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good work. Yes. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves we together. Need to, okay. Say, so let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work. So we should be edifying, building up, helping each other out. Okay. In this walk. Okay. And then not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Why? We assemble together. Don't forsake that. Why? Because we need to strengthen each other. We need some help. We need some guidance. We need some encouragement. Because it can be a very lonely walk. Amen. Okay, so not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as what? Oh, I'm sorry. Give me one second. Uh, assembling ourselves together as the manner of some of is, mm -hmm. but exhorting one another. Building up one another, encouraging one another. Go ahead. And so much the more as ye the day approaching. And we see the day approaching, brothers and sisters. It's closer now than it ever been, right? So we see the day approaching, and in the meantime, we need to love each other, provoke each other to good works, assemble together, exhort one another as we see the day, as we see the day approaching. And let's just go ahead and um, read uh, 26, 27. Go ahead. For if we sin willfully, mm -hmm. after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, uh -huh. there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But what is waiting for you if you do want to just sin all willy-nilly? If you want to be and do what you want to do and do it the way you want to do, like Nadab in a bayou. What's waiting for you in verse 27? But a certain fear for looking for the judgment and fire indignation, mm -hmm. which shall devour the adversaries. And anyone who goes against, who goes contrary. Okay? Now, I don't want to digress very much, so we're going to get right back into this whole priesthood thing as we go to Jeremiah. Okay? Our subject is about the Levitical priesthood, so that's what we're going to continue. Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. And when we get to Jeremiah 33, we want to pick it up at verse 7. Jeremiah 33 and 7, and when you get there, let the Bible speak. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, mm -hmm. and will build them as at the first. Okay, go ahead. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, mm -hmm. whereby they have sinned against me. Mm -hmm. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, mm -hmm. and whereby they have transgressed against me. Go ahead, brother. And it, excuse me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and honor before all the nations of the earth, mm -hmm. which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. Mm -hmm. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness, for all the prosperity that I pro uh, procure unto it. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, again there shall be heard in this place, mm -hmm. which ye shall say uh, shall be desolate without men. Without beasts, mm -hmm. even the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. that they are desolate without men mm -hmm. and without inhabitant and without beasts. Mm -hmm. The voice of the joy and the voice of the gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, mm -hmm. praise the Lord of hosts. Yes. For the Lord is good mm -hmm. for his mercies endure forever. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. And them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, mm -hmm. for I will cause the return of captivity of the land, as is the first, saith mm -hmm. the Lord. Okay, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, again in this place, which is desolate without the man, without beast, mm -hmm. and all the cities thereof shall be inhabitation of the shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. Yes. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him mm -hmm. that tell them, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel mm -hmm. and to the house of Judah. The days is coming. Now, listen up. The days is coming, guys. Go ahead, 15. And in those days, at that time, will I branch the righteousness to grow up into David yes. and shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. That hadn't happened and yet. Go ahead. In those days shall Judah be saved mm -hmm. and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. Are they dwelling safely in Jerusalem <laughs> right now? No. Hadn't happened yet. Go ahead. And this is the same where, wherewith she shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Go ahead. For thus says the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Yep, there will, there will not be lack of a king, in other words. There won't be, but this hasn't happened yet. Go ahead. Neither shall the priest, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. Because Levites, they'll have their job back too. Okay. There's a suspension of having kings right now. There's a suspension of having priests right now. Okay, that's why it's coming back. But we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see that. We'll, we'll let the scriptures bear that out. Go ahead. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord, if ye can break my covenant of the day, mm -hmm. my covenant of the night, mm -hmm. and there should be not be day, night uh, in their season, mm -hmm. then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant. Mm -hmm. That he should not have a son to reign upon his throne mm -hmm. with the Levites and the priests, my ministers. Okay, so, so that did break. Now, he's not talking about David specifically. He's talking about his line. Okay, so he said, uh, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant. Okay, because he said after that, because really after, after Solomon, the kingdom split up and everything. And then after that, it wasn't that much longer. I mean, it was northern tribe, southern tribe. Then after the captivity and stuff, they were just wiping out Israel everywhere. Then there was no king. Okay, there was David, then Solomon, still all 12 together. After that, it broke up immediately. And you had north, south. One side went into captivity. Then the other side went to the captivity. And after that, there were no more kings. Okay, you know, we had Rehoboam and Jeroboam and all that. It was, mm. After that, it was over. Okay, so that line ceased. So the kingship ceased. Okay, so we got that. And then we know, and he said, and with the Levites, the priests, uh, my ministers. Okay, uh, verse 22. As the host of the heaven cannot be numbered, mm -hmm. neither the sand of the sea measured, mm -hmm. so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, mm -hmm. and the Levites that minister unto me. Oh, so we know that hasn't happened yet. Okay? So I'm going to multiply, okay, the seed of David, my servant. Okay, now we know David is from Judah and stuff like that, but we also know our Lord is a king of kings and a lord of lords, which means he's a king, he has kings under him. So if there's a resurrection, that means David's going to be resurrected, right? And then when we look at the parables and it says, okay, um, the parables of, of, of the talents, he said, okay, you did good. You know, you, you, you raised it up to 10. Okay, be Lord over 10 cities. Oh, you did pretty good. You be Lord over five cities. He's trying to get us some understanding because there's going to be a protocol, right? Mm -hmm. And he said we're going to be kings and priests over somebody, right? Yep. There's going to be people in the kingdom. Because the Lord has a government and a protocol. You don't just to go in the kingdom all willy-nilly and do what you want to do. There's going to be some order, some protocol. Okay? When a king or a priest order you, if you happen to be, if you're so blessed to be in the kingdom, and they say, okay, you need to go over here for tabernacles, guess what you're going? You're going over there for tabernacles. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. There's some order. Okay? We got to get used to that. There's some order. So we know he's a king because he's going to raise up kings. He's a Lord. He's going to raise up. Lord, it's just, this is positions of authority. That's it. He's going to raise up priests. Okay? Just positions of authority. Okay? Because there will be people who don't have an eternal, everlasting, glorified body, but one that where their life is just extended during the millennium. You got to look at the millennial lesson. Okay? And they are going to need guidance. But guess what? The scripture is going to talk about some of that too. Not everyone's going to be in charge. There will be a protocol, okay? There will be some rank there, order, okay? So let's, say, let's, let's, let's continue because we want the scripture to bear that out. We read 22. Let's look at Joel 1, okay? Go to Joel 1. That will be forward a couple of books, actually. Go to Joel 1. One, two, three, four, like five books ahead. Joel 1. Now we do a little bit of jumping around. Joel 1, and let's read verse 
I'm going to read two verses, Joel 1, and let's read verse 9, okay, verse 9, and when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. Oh, almost there? Yeah. Okay. Actually, we went backwards. Joel 1? Joel 1, and read verse 9. The meat offering and drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. Uh-huh. The priest, the Lord's ministers, mourn. Ah, see? So he was even saying right here in Joel, yeah, that's going to stop. The offerings are going to stop. What's going on? And the priests are going to mourn. Because, see, they knew. See, in that time, they knew that, wait a minute. If the offerings and oblations are going to stop, then what are we going to do about our sins? Mm -hmm. We have to bear our sins if that's going to stop. See, that weighed heavily on them that a day like that was coming. Drop the 13, brother. Gird yourselves mm -hmm. and the lament. Mm -hmm. And lament, priests. that's just crying and weeping and wailing, sad depression, okay? Say, gird yourselves and lament. Go ahead. Ye priests. Ye who? Priests. Go ahead. How? Uh -huh. Ye ministers you of who? the altar. Ministers of the altar. Go ahead. Come. Lie all night in sackcloth, uh -huh. ye ministers of my God. Uh -huh. For the meat offering and drink offering is withholding from the house of your God. That's why they are upset. Because, Lord, I have to, you mean we have to bear our iniquities? What do you mean we can't sacrifice? Because the Lord said there's a day that's coming where you won't be able to do that. <clears throat> He's going to set that back up again. Now, it may confuse some people who say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, we're going to, wait a minute, the Messiah is going to be here, and then you're talking about setting up the Levitical priesthood and all that stuff. I, I don't understand. I don't get it. Well, first, first, first and foremost, not everyone's going to be immortal. Mm -hmm. Second of all, it will be not efficacious for them to offer the sacrifices. It will be commemorative. Teaching the fleshlings, this is what the, you know, the Messiah, the king who we go to see and worship and stuff like that, we're showing you this is what he did. Just commemorating, memorialize, much like we do now when we do our feast days now. We just memorialize it. We understand we're not in Jerusalem right now. Okay? So it is not for effect. It's just to memorialize, to teach another schoolmaster. Because they have to make their choice. Okay? You know, after the thousand years and the devil come up and tempt them and he actually gets some of them. You, everyone has to have the opportunity to make their choice. Does that make sense? Yep. OK, that's why it'll come back. Not because, oh, because bulls and goats will be able to take away their. No, it won't. But everyone has to have a schoolmaster. OK, so that's what we have to understand. So we did 13. Go to uh, Hosea 3 and we're going to read one verse. Hosea 3. One book. Go back. One book. One book back. Hosea 3. And let's read one verse. Okay, Hosea 3, read one verse. Read verse 4, brother. 3 and 4. Hosea 3, 4. For the children of Israel mm -hmm. shall bide many days without a king. Oh, so that David line, that's gone. Go ahead. Without a prince. Uh-huh. Without a sacrifice. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Go ahead. And without an image. Mm-hmm. And without an effort. Uh-huh. And without teraphim. Okay, so they won't have any of that. Any of that. But afterwards, in verse 5, go ahead. Afterward. Shall the children of Israel return mm -hmm. and seek the Lord their God uh -huh. and David their king mm -hmm. and shall fear the Lord mm -hmm. his goodness in the latter days. In the latter days. So all oh, that's coming back, huh? Mm -hmm. In the latter days. David's coming back. He's going to be a king. Probably going to be in charge more than any other king. There will be other kings. David's probably going to be in charge most most of the territory god has a protocol and we just got to get that in our head <laughs> he has a protocol he's he's just like any corporation you got a ceo he got a president vice president <laughs> regional vice president district man god's gonna have the same thing these are not our original ideas mm -hmm. god already has that okay so i hope this is starting to make sense let's go to daniel 9 and that's back one book. Daniel 9. Go back one book. Daniel 9. Excuse me. Okay. Daniel 9. And let's look at verse 
25. Okay, is this picture starting to come into focus now? It's starting to make sense a little bit? Okay, Daniel 9 and 25. We like to go a little bit deeper into the scripture. Daniel 9, verse 25. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. Now, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and the building of Jerusalem mm -hmm. unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks mm -hmm. and three score and two weeks, and the street shall be built again, mm -hmm. and the wall even in the troublous times. Yep. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, mm -hmm. but not for himself. Mm -hmm. And for the people of the prince that shall come and destroy the city mm -hmm. and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood mm -hmm. until the end of the war desolations are determined. Okay, so that's 70 AD right there. But go ahead, 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many of uh, for another for one week. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of the week, he shall be caused to be sacrificed and the oblation to cease. We've been talking about sacrifices and oblations to stop, okay? And he says that some, somewhere after the Messiah's death, they're going to stop. And we know the last and final time Jerusalem was destroyed, 70 AD, hadn't been the same since. Yep. Okay? The last and final time. We know it hasn't been the same since. Okay? So he said he's going to uh, cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease. And for what else? And for overspreading of the abominations, mm -hmm. he shall make it desolate. Yeah, he destroyed all that. So they're not doing nothing over there. There's nothing, there's nothing official over there going on right now. Okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So even when even until the cons uh, consummation mm -hmm. and the determined shall be poured upon the desolate yes sir now let's go to Matthew 24 Matthew 24 let's see what Messiah says real quick Matthew 24 Matthew 24 Let's talk. We we mentioned or we just read a little bit about desolation. So let's uh, Matthew twenty four, and we're going to read verse one and two. Matthew twenty four, verse one and two. Get that, brother. Let the Bible speak. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, mm -hmm. and the disciples came to him, for show him the building of the temple. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him. Mm -hmm. See ye not all these things? Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. there shall not be left here one stone upon another mm -hmm. that shall not be thrown down. There it is. It's just that simple. He was talking about the destruction that was going to happen, okay? He was talking about that. But if you want to um, look at a little bit more as we, as, he, as, uh, as we matriculate throughout history, all the way up to current day, we can read a little bit more if you care. Read verse 3, brother. Go ahead. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. And the disciples came unto him privately, saying, mm -hmm. Tell us, when shall these things be? Mm -hmm. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And at the end of the world. Okay, separate and, questions, but go ahead. Okay. And Jesus answered, said unto them, mm -hmm. Take heed that no man uh, deceive you. Because the first thing people are going to do this day and age is deceive you. Period. That's number one. That's why he meant, think, think about this. They ask these questions, and the first answer that the Messiah get, says is, Don't let a man deceive you. And we've been deceived most of our lives. Go ahead. For baby shall come in my name, saying, mm -hmm. I am Christ. Yep. And shall deceive many. Because they're going to give you another Christ. Oh, they're going to use the name. They're going to say, oh, well, you know, Jesus, this and that, this and that, what oh, I love, and all that other stuff. But they're not going to give you the true doctrine. Okay, go ahead. And you shall hear of wars mm -hmm. and rumors of wars. Do we hear, do we hear that today? Yep. More than ever. More than ever. More than when we were all younger. We hear more today than ever. Go ahead. See that ye be not troubled, mm -hmm. for all these things must come to pass, yep. but the end is not yet. So when we're looking at France, and we're looking at Benghazi, and we're looking at all these places that have all these little, uh, you know, little riots and terrorist acts and all that, it's supposed to happen. But the end is not yet. Not yet. Go ahead, brother. For nation shall rise against nation. It's about to happen. And kingdom against kingdom. Uh huh. And there shall be famines mm -hmm. and pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. It's starting. Go ahead. And all these are the beginnings of sorrow. So all this stuff we're get is just the beginning. It's just starting. This is just now getting started. You think it's bad? No. Venezuela. The, Venezuela. We got the Brexit. What's going to happen? Okay, Britain just left the EU and all that. This is the beginning, okay? It's just getting warmed up. 
just getting warmed up. Okay, go ahead. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted mm -hmm. and shall kill you. That's going to happen. And Go you ahead. shall be hated of all nations mm -hmm. for my name's sake. Now, how come the, how come the pastor, uh, the pastor, how come the apostle didn't say, well, Jesus, what about all the love? You're supposed to be talking about nice stuff. Hmm. He just told him like it was. <laughs> he said, this is what's going to happen. Okay. He didn't do the Pied Piper stuff, you know, sing your lullaby uh, off to death. He said, no, this is what's going to happen. You know, go ahead, brother. And then shall many be offended, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and shall betray one another, yep. and shall hate one another. Yeah, you are going to offend some people with this stuff you're oh, talking. Yeah. yeah. Sisters, why y'all doing this old head covering stuff? Y'all going to offend some more liberated women. <laughs> you're going to offend them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 some people are going to be offended. What do you mean, Sabbath? What do you mean you got to do it on a Saturday and stuff? No, brother, we, we, we don't do that. What do you mean we got to keep that? You're trying to put us back under that law. That's what you're trying to do. Many people are going to be offended in that day. It's happening. It's starting to happen today. I could go on, but I think you guys know where I'm going. I could go on. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another because i'm gonna tell you right now when you become these weird commandment keeping torah observant messianic people you know prepper going out on a farm trying to be off grid and all this other stuff you will be betrayed because people are gonna be like what are they hey those people over there that's what they're gonna be they'll be looking for you they're gonna be trapped in a city like rats upset and they're looking for trouble they're gonna comply with the system and they're not going to like anybody who doesn't comply with the system. They're going to hate you. Because the Bible says, come out of her, my people. And not everybody's going to come out of her, my people. Mm -mm. Okay? No. All right. All right. And what else is going to happen in verse 11? And many false prophets shall rise. Oh, my goodness. And shall deceive many. Oh, my goodness. And because iniquity shall bound. <laughs> mm-hmm. The love of many shall wax cold. Uh-huh, but? But he that shall endure to the end, mm -hmm. the same shall be saved. So how long you got to endure? To the end. Okay. So don't let me lie to you and say it's something else. I mean, Messiah said until you endure to the end. So guess what I'm going to say? You got to endure to the end. Is that simple. We're going to move on to Malachi 2 and 7. Read one verse real quick. Malachi 2 and 7. For the priest's lips... Mm -hmm. Should keep knowledge. What? The priest's lips shall keep knowledge. Go ahead. And they should seek the law mm -hmm. at his mouth. Mm -hmm. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That's what we're supposed to do. See, the priest's lips are supposed to keep knowledge. Someone stand before you, they should study the word. They should seek the Lord. They should pray. They should say what thus says the Lord. First order of business is not to entertain. Mm -hmm. In that passage we just read in Matthew 24, uh, Jesus wasn't very entertaining now, was he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't see anybody grab the popcorn on that. Mm -mm. It was scary. Yeah. No one breaking out the popcorn on that. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 15. Go back a little bit more. Second Chronicles 15. Excuse me. And we're going to read one verse. Second Chronicles 15. Okay, because this 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 has happened. Second Chronicles 15, one verse, verse 3. Now for a long season, mm -hmm. Israel hath been with, without the true God, mm -hmm. and without a teaching priest, mm -hmm. and without law. A teaching priest. So that's what the priest is supposed to do. They're supposed to teach you. I entertain you. I'm not saying a message can't be entertaining. Of course it can. But it better have some substance. It better mean something. You know, like my teacher had said, you know, you're supposed to come out of class. That's why these camps, they call it class now, because the emphasis on learning something. OK, some people, they don't even get it. They, they, well, class, you know, it doesn't feel like church. That's because you're used to being entertained. Mm -hmm. 
not taught. That's why we just call what we do class. Because as my teacher said, said, you are supposed to come out of the class knowing more on your way out than when you came in. You're supposed to get something, right? You're supposed to learn something. What thus says the Lord. That's why the guy in front of you should be teaching you something. You should learn something. Or he may even confirm what you've been studying. But you got to get something out of it. Okay? So let's continue. Ezra 7. Ezra 7. Very next book. Ezra chapter 7, verse 10. Okay, 7 and 10. Go ahead, brother. For Ezra had prepared his heart to mm -hmm. seek the law of the Lord. Uh-huh. To do it. And to, wait, 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 wait. E okay, wait a minute. Ezra had prepared his heart, he made up his mind, to seek the law of the Lord and to do it, and then do what? And to teach Israel statutes and judgments. Uh-huh, so that's what you're supposed to have, you know? Someone stands up in front of you, he's supposed to seek the law and the Lord and do it, and then go teach it. That's what he's supposed to do. You said many times, a lot of times, pastors today, they don't teach certain things because they're not going to do it. I agree with you. Some things they're not going to say because they're not going to do it. They're not going to say anything about dietary laws or anything like that. Why? Because they're not going to keep the dietary laws, or they're not going to say anything about it. Yeah. It's that simple. But he's, he's going to exit. Look in the, he's going to look in the law. You can't read throughout the Old Testament and not run into the dietary law. Nope. Okay. And, then it's, and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. All these things, brothers and sisters. Revelation 5. See, what we're not used to is getting the whole Bible. That's what we're not used to. We're used to getting a little piece here, a little piece there. No, we're supposed to get all of it, okay? You go to class long enough, you're supposed to have pretty much covered all the Bible. That makes sense? Over time, over time, you're supposed to have pretty much covered all the Bible. Now ask yourself how much of the Bible was covered in your former life. And what I mean is when you're in Sunday church, I'm not talking about an afterlife. Okay, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about reincarnation yeah. and all that stuff. In your past life, they say, "Oh, this brother, he's teaching comments. past life." No, 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 not your past life. I'm just talking about you know the the old man. Yeah, the sun, your your Sunday church life. How much Bible did you learn then, or did you just memorize a few favorite passages? There's a difference, right? You either learn the doctrine or you learn a few. Oh, 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 oh! I, I know John three sixteen. Come on. We got to know more than that. We got to have a little bit more than that. So, Revelation 5, read verse 9 and 10. Revelation 5, 9 and 10. Go ahead, brother. And they sung a new song, saying, uh -huh. Thou art worthy to take the book mm -hmm. and to open the seal thereof. Mm -hmm. For thou wast was slain mm -hmm. and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred mm -hmm. and tongue mm -hmm. and people and nation. Yes. And has made us unto our God kings what? and priests. Whoa, kings and priests. Uh-huh. And we shall reign on the earth. Couple of things right mm. there. And the brother emphasizes it right there. But two things, two things, two things. God has, um, he said, unto God, kings and priests, which means you're a king over somebody, right? And we know priests are supposed to teach, right? So, kings, priests, that's what's going to be here. And they're going to be in heaven. No, 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 sorry, he didn't say that either. Mm -hmm. It says, we shall reign on the earth. How do, pe how do we miss that one? Mm -hmm. how, how can we miss that? It's very end of the book. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I don't know how we miss that, okay? Now, this, this lesson isn't about that, but it is about paying attention to what we're reading. Okay? Can't make this stuff up. Oh, Pastor Robert told me. No, 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 no. I read to you. Okay? There's a difference. I read to you. Okay? So, has made, uh, made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Okay? Revelation. We're still in the book. So, go to, go to the first part real quick. 
Revelation 1, and we're going to read one verse, and then we'll move on to Ezekiel. Revelation 1, and read verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests uh -huh. unto God and his Father. Uh -huh. To him be glory mm -hmm. and dominion forever and ever. Okay. Amen. Now, this is when he comes back, people. He's going to make kings and priests when he comes back. This is Revelation. Hadn't happened yet. Kings and priests, when he comes back, I'm just driving home the point. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 44. When he comes back, this is future, kings and priests. You're going to be a king over something, and you're going to be a priest over something, and we know that kings rule, priests teach. Simple, right? And they got to teach somebody. Okay? Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel 44. When you get there, brother, start at the uh, very first verse. Go ahead. Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, mm -hmm. which looketh toward the east, mm -hmm. and it was shut. Then the, said the Lord unto me, mm -hmm. This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, mm -hmm. and no man shall enter in it by it, mm -hmm. because the Lord God of Israel hath entered it by it. Therefore it shall be shut. Mm -hmm. It is the prince and the prince he shall sit to the eat bread. Okay. It's for the prince. The Lord. Okay, it's for the prince and the prince he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. Okay, so go ahead. He shall enter by the way of the porch mm -hmm. of that gate and shall go out by the way of the same. Mm -hmm. Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house. Mm -hmm. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Yes. And I fell upon my face. Yes. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold, behold with thy eyes, hear thy ears, that all that I say unto thee concerning mm -hmm. all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. So he's saying, pay attention and remember. Go ahead. And all the laws thereof, and mark well the entering of the in, in of the house, with every going forth of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. uh, and thou shalt say to the rebellious, even of the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, O God, mm -hmm. O ye house of Israel, mm -hmm. Let it suffice you all your abominations, mm -hmm. and that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, mm -hmm. uncircumcised in heart, mm -hmm. and uncircumcised in flesh. You got to have both. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. To be in my sanctuary, mm -hmm. to pollute it. Uh -huh. Even my house, when ye offer my bread, mm -hmm. the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant mm -hmm. because of all your abominations. The Lord is not having it. Go ahead. And ye shall not kept the charge of my holy things. You have not kept the charge of my holy things. Go ahead. But ye have uh, have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Yep. Thus saith the Lord, no stranger uncircumcised in heart, mm -hmm. nor uncircumcised in flesh, mm -hmm. shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Go ahead. And the Levites that are gone are away far from me, mm -hmm. when Israel went astray, mm -hmm. which went astray away from me after their idols, Go ahead. they shall even bear their iniquity. Go ahead. Yet... They shall be ministers in my sanctuary. Ah, okay, okay. Having charge at the gates of the house mm -hmm. and the ministering of the house, mm -hmm. they shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, mm -hmm. and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Ah, so see, they went away, and you know, and the Levites that are gone away from me, and when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquities. Yet. They shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and sacrifice for the people. Interesting. And they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Verse 12, brother. Because they ministered unto them before their idols mm -hmm. and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Mm -hmm. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, mm -hmm. and they shall bear their iniquity. Go ahead. And they shall not come near to me. To the office of the priest unto me, mm -hmm. nor come near to any of my holy things mm -hmm. in the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame, their abominations which they have committed. Mm -hmm. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house mm -hmm. for the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. See, they messing up, messing up over and over and over and over. But the Lord said, you know what? No, they're going to do their job. Okay, I may have to chastise them a little bit, but they're going to do this job. That's how important this job is to him. Go ahead. But the priests, the Levites, 
the sons of Zadok, mm -hmm. that kept charge of my sanctuary, mm -hmm. then the children of Israel mm -hmm. went astray from me. And what are they going to do? They shall come near to me to minister unto me, mm -hmm. and they shall stand before me to offer me the fat of the blood, saith the Lord God. Go ahead. They shall enter to my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table, mm -hmm. and minister unto me, mm -hmm. and they shall keep my charge. See, regardless, they Israel been messing up, the people been messing up over and over, but they're still going to do the office of the priesthood. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that mm -hmm. when they enter the gates of the inner court, mm -hmm. they shall be clothed with linen garments. Oh, again, and with no the clothes. wool mm -hmm. shall come upon them mm -hmm. while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. Okay. Now, no wool. Now, guys, don't know. some people might get carried away. Oh, we can't wear wool. No. At this time and in that particular, when, they're, when you're performing that particular duty, okay, and no wool shall come upon them while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. I just say that because, you know, some people are kind of, they get a little slick and, you know, they, hey, we can't see, we, we can't wear wool. No, no, no. That's if you're a Levite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. That's if you're a Levite and at the time you're ministering in the gate, in the inner court. Verse 18, brother. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads. Okay, so you, so some people say, oh, a man can't cover his head. Yes, a man can cover his head. In fact, the Levites did cover their head with bonnets or they may look like a turban tur turban sorry or or the 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 miters or mitres right right there and the the crown of their head is exposed but they can have a wrap around their head and stuff so there's a lot of mis teachings on that too making it seem like a guy can't cover his head he can okay you just got to do it the way the lord prescribes right go ahead and shall have linen breeches upon their loins mm -hmm. they shall not girt themselves with anything that causes sweat right see that's why you don't want that wool and all that other stuff on there i don't want stuff that caused them to sweat okay he even gave you a reason and the lord didn't even have to give us a reason but he gave us one so that's good i don't want them to have that i don't want them to be hot I want them to be comfortable i need materials that breathe okay go ahead and when they go forth into the other court, mm -hmm. even the other court of the people, shall they put off their garments, mm -hmm. wherein my minister and lay, uh, lay them in the holy chambers, mm -hmm. and they shall put on their garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments, mm -hmm. neither shall they shave their heads, mm -hmm. nor suffer their locks to grow long. Locks. Locks. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm just pointing, I'm going to emphasize that. I want you to think about that, okay? Locks. I don't even want to talk about Go that. Ahead. Go ahead. Keep <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Their heads were suffering their locks to grow long. Uh -huh. They shall not only uh, pull their heads. Right. Neither shall any priest drink wine mm -hmm. when they enter into intercourse. When they enter into intercourse. You can't drink wine when you enter. You cannot have alcohol when you're performing the duty of the priesthood. You just can't. Okay? Go ahead, brother. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, mm -hmm. nor her that is put away. So they cannot take, uh, the, the Levites, they cannot take a, a, a widow, okay, someone who their husband died, okay, and nor her that is put away, a divorced woman, okay, that is put away. You, a Levite cannot take her either, okay, can't have her. Go ahead. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel, mm -hmm. or a widow that had a priest before. Now, if the widow was married to a priest then you could okay we're just following the the the, the uh, prescription that's just right here okay we're just going by what the bible says go ahead and they shall teach my people before between and holy profane mm -hmm. and because of the discern between the unclean and the clean look at what they're going to teach the people hmm, i wonder where they got that from. <laughs> where did that come from they're going to teach the people they're going to teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. If you go to Hawaii and you go to a luau or something and you see, you know, the pig with the apple in it, that's eh, unholy. Mm -hmm. That's profane. That's what the priest is supposed to do, tell you. <clears throat> All right? I mean, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to teach you between the holy and the profane, between the clean and the unclean. With that example I just gave you, it's unclean. Okay, go ahead. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment. Mm -hmm. and they shall judge it according to my judgment. Wait, 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 wait. When they start throwing that thou shall not judge stuff, you know they're using it out of context, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. We'll keep going. And they shall keep my laws mm -hmm. and statutes uh -huh. in all my assemblies. Uh -huh. And they shall hollow my Sabbath. Ah, but they're not going to hollow Sunday, huh? They're going to hollow my Sabbaths, which means rest. See, the Sabbath actually means something. 
when it's talking about entering into his rest, symbolic of the millennial range, thousand years. That's what it's symbolic. Uh, but they don't want to teach you that. They want to get you off the Sabbath and it doesn't matter. Oh, every day is a Sabbath, not according to the Bible. Mm -mm. But okay, that's fine. That's fine. They don't want to teach you that. Okay. They said, let no man deceive you. That's what the Messiah said in the last day. Let no man deceive you. But they're going to give you all kinds of excuses and they're going to deceive you. See, Paul broke bread on the first day of the week. Now we go on Sunday. Let no man deceive you. Go ahead. 25. And and they shall come to at no dead person to fight themselves. Okay, now. Sorry. And they shall come at no dead person to defile. So they won't be handling dead bodies. Okay? But there is an exception there. Go ahead. But for father or mother, mm -hmm. or for son, or mm -hmm. for daughter, or mm -hmm. for brother, or for sister that have no husband, mm -hmm. they may defile themselves. Okay. So you can bury your family, right? Well, then we're not gonna. Then we're not gonna add to it. But for the father, or for mother, or for the son, or for the daughter, for the brother, or for the sister that had no husband, they may defile themselves. Twenty six. And after he is cleansed, mm -hmm. they shall reckon unto him seven days. Okay. Now I, I just want to. Um, I just would not. I'm just cautious not to add. I noticed it didn't say, uh, I'm glad you point that out. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, that's pretty interesting right there. But, so you're saying like if a Levite, if his wife died or something like that. Remember, in part one, when we're talking about all the things that they were, that he was being very specific. You know, blood on the right, on the tip of the right ear and the left foot and all that stuff. Very, very specific. We have to try to not be like Nadab and Abihu and be very, very specific. And he didn't give us an out with the wife, so we're just going to have to go with what the Bible says. You know. And again, I'm not saying I'm a Levite. I'm just saying that we just got to go with what the Bible says and doesn't have that provision for the wife. Interesting. And after he is cleansed, they shall reckon unto him seven days. 27. And the day that he goeth into the sanctuary, mm -hmm. unto the inner court, to minister in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. he shall offer his sin offerings, saith the Lord God. Now, they reckon unto him seven days simply means, you know, he's going to be unclean, considered unclean, ceremonially, spiritually unclean for seven days. Okay? So then he can come back and do what he has to do. And when he comes back, he shall offer his sin offering, saith the Lord God. Go ahead, brother. And it shall be upon them an inheritance. Mm -hmm. I am their inheritance. Mm -hmm. And you shall give them no possession in Israel. Mm -hmm. I am their possession. So Levites don't get physical land, right? Mm -hmm. Now we know. Go ahead. They shall eat the meat offering mm -hmm. and the sin offering and the trespass offering. And every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. Yes. And the first of all for first fruits of all things and every oblation of all. The ever uh, sword of your oblations mm -hmm. shall be the priest. Mm -hmm. He shall also give excuse me, excuse me, mm -hmm. unto the priest the first of your dough, mm -hmm. that he may cause the blessing to rest in thy house. Yes. The priest shall not eat of anything that is dead of itself yep. or torn, mm -hmm. whether it be fowl or bees. Right, yeah. It, it has to be butchered, okay? They can't just find something dead and... And say, well, let's just cook it up. You can't do that, okay? Or torn of itself, or, you know, an animal that was in a fight or something. You, no, you can't do that. It's got to be uh, properly butchered, okay? So let's go on over to, and keep, keep your uh, marker in Ezekiel because we're going to come back there real quick. But let's go to Psalm 89 real quick. And when we leave Psalm 89, we'll go right back to Ezekiel. Psalm 89. Okay, Psalm 89 and verse 4 to begin with, then we'll skip to another verse. Psalm 89 and verse 4. Go ahead. Thy seed will I establish forever mm -hmm. and build up thy throne to all generations. See you later. Okay, now go to 36, verse 36. His seed shall endure forever, mm -hmm. and his throne as a son before me. Okay, so this is going to be a forever type thing. Now, let's go back to Ezekiel and go to 46. Because the Lord de deals with forever type things. So, Ezekiel 46, and let's start at verse 
1. 46 and 1. Let's take a look at this. Thus saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east mm -hmm. shall be shut in the six working days. Mm -hmm. But on the Sabbath it shall be opened. Mm -hmm. In the day of the new moon it mm -hmm. shall be opened. Yes. And the prince shall enter by the way of the porch, mm -hmm. that gate without, mm -hmm. and shall stand by the post of the gate. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall prepare his burnt offering, mm -hmm. uh, burnt offerings, and in his peace offerings. Mm -hmm. And he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Mm -hmm. And he shall go forth, but the gate shall not be shut until the evening. Okay, go ahead. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship the, the door at the door, I'm sorry, of the gate before the Lord in the Sabbaths and in the new moon. In the Sabbaths and in the new moons. Go ahead. And the burnt offerings that the prince shall offer unto the Lord in the Sabbath day mm -hmm. shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. Go ahead. And the meat offering shall be an uh, ephah for a ram mm -hmm. and a meat offering for the lambs as shall be able to give and hen of oil to the ifa. Okay, so we're gonna look at so we're looking at a couple things now. Let's go to Zechariah, and we just got a few more places. Let's go to Zechariah eight. So we're looking at what the priests will be doing. So let's go to Zechariah eight. I almost put a Robert. <laughs> I went to Zephaniah. <laughs> let's go to Zechariah eight. Okay, and when we get to Zechariah eight, we're gonna read one verse. Really, actually, the last verse there. But let's go, uh, Zechariah 8, read verse 23, and then we're going to go to another place in Zechariah. So let's go 8 and 23. Go ahead, brother. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. in those days it shall come to pass, mm -hmm. that the ten men shall be take hold out of the, all languages of the nations, uh -huh. even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, uh -huh. saying, we will go with you, uh -huh. for we have heard that God is with you. Ah, so people are going to try to graft into those that is a Jew because God's dealing with Israel. Okay, now this Old Testament Jew, you know, so it's, it's Judah and Benjamin and Levi. But, you know, it was also, uh, uh, I got to go back to it, but there uh an Israelite out of another, out of one of the other tribes were also referred to as a Jew too. So it was interchangeable uh, back then in some respect but he said you know that he's going to take him the scold uh, the skirt of him that is a jew saying we will go with you for we have heard that god is with you and notice that it's just uh it's people from all languages and nations that are going to do this find out who the jews are find out who israel is and say you know what i know the lord is working prophecy is centered around you guys i want to figure out what's going on with you guys so we're still in Zechariah. go to chapter 14 Let's look at this some more. Chapter 14. And let's look at look what else is going to happen. 14, go to 16, brother. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that every one that is left in all nations, mm -hmm. which came against Jerusalem, mm -hmm. shall even go up from one year mm -hmm. to year to worship the king. Let me ask you something. Question, class. It says, and it shall come to pass, that's a clue right there, that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go, I mean, shall even go up from year to year to worship the king. Are we going up, are we going to Jerusalem right now to worship a king? Hadn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. So, okay, everyone left from all the nations that came against Jerusalem Okay, shall go up from year to year to worship the king and do what? The Lord of hosts. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts mm -hmm. to keep the feast of the tabernacles. Oh, wait a minute. See, we know that hadn't happened yet, but we're still keeping a feast of tabernacles. You see? Hadn't happened yet, but we're still keeping a feast of tabernacles when that comes. Okay? And that king is a capital K. So we, we know we're talking about the king. Okay? All right. The king. 17, brother. And it shall be mm -hmm. that whoso will not come up from mm -hmm. all the families of the earth unto mm -hmm. Jerusalem. All the families of the earth to, to, to uh, Jerusalem to what? To worship the king, mm -hmm. the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Even upon them shall uh, be no rain. You don't eat. You come to Jerusalem. When one of those other kings, you know, with the little K, when those other little mm -hmm. kings or one of those other priests or something like that say, look, phew, we got to go to Jerusalem. A <laughs> piece of tabernacles. You got to go. Or it won't rain where you are. And we've seen plenty of times in Scripture where someone did something and it hurt their family too. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yep. yeah. Yep. So the wife is at home. It's like, okay, so how come we're not eating? Right, Honey, we what's going eating. on? You know, <laughs> let me. Ch- oh, we're supposed to go to Jerusalem? Why didn't you tell me? Yeah. You know, hey, it's, t- it's time to go. So it won't rain, okay? And it, shall, um, and it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Verse 18. And if the family of Egypt go not up uh-huh. and come not. Mm, what will happen? They have no rain. No rain. There shall be the plague. Oh, you don't know what plagues are. Y'all read them in the Bible. They're not pretty. Go ahead. Wherewith the Lord Mm -hmm. will smite the heathen Mm -hmm. that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. You don't have a choice. You got to go to to the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is all future. That's all future. Oh, we don't do that. That's just done away. What's... (laughs) <laughs> we're not going to Jerusalem year by year to worship the king, capital K. We're not doing that, so it hadn't happened yet. Nope. And all the families of the earth, all the families of the earth, haven't happened yet. This feast day is not fulfilled yet. Even if it was the Old Testament, uh, that didn't happen. It didn't happen so. yet. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff in the Old Testament that hadn't happened yet. Plenty. Plenty. I I, like yeah, I mean, I could, I could do a whole class on the stuff in the Old Testament that hasn't happened yet. Yep. Okay, so that's that's uh, let no man deceive you, <laughs> brothers. Let no man deceive you. We got three places and we're done. Okay, three places and we're done. Isaiah fifty six. Let's go to Isaiah fifty six. Three places and we are done. Isaiah fifty six. We're gonna read one verse. Isaiah 56, okay? And when you get there, brother, I want you to read one verse. Isaiah 56, read verse 7 for me, if you don't mind. Even them I will bring into to my holy mountain mm-hmm. and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Uh-huh. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. Wait for my house uh-huh. shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Okay, so... The Lord hadn't brought all people over there to worship in his holy mountain just yet. Hadn't done that yet because we're in Isaiah. So you can't say, oh, well, in Exodus, there was a... Yeah, that, that was way before Isaiah, okay? That's way in the beginning. But he said, even them will I bring to my holy mountain, I got you, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifice shall be accepted upon my altar. So there's going to be some burnt offerings and sacrifices. It's a schoolmaster, Okay. It's a schoolmaster. So let's just relax. It's a schoolmaster. Okay? It should be the house of prayer. Now let's go. You're still in Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 66. Okay? Isaiah 66. And we're going to read one verse right there. Okay? Go ahead. And it shall come to pass from that one new moon to another, uh-huh. and from the Sabbath to another, mm-hmm. shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Has this happened yet, brothers and sisters? All flesh shall come to worship before me, said the Lord, from one new moon to another. So, ah, these new moons mean something. These holy days mean something. And these Sabbaths mean something. It, had, it hasn't happened yet. All flesh doesn't come to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. Not yet. One more place and we're done. Okay? One more place. And that's going to be Revelation 20. Last place. Revelation 20. And then we're done. Let no one fool you. It had not happened yet. But they'll give you philosophy and try to twist the scripture to their own. But you can read this for yourself. You can see it for yourself. You're like, wait a minute, that hadn't happened yet. (laughs) Then it still applies. Okay, It's, it's that simple. Don't let them try to dazzle you. Okay, Revelation 20 and 1. Go ahead, brother. I saw an angel come down from heaven, Mm -hmm. having a key of the bottomless pit Uh and a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he laid it upon the hold on the dragon, Mm -hmm. that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Yes. And cast him into the bottomless pit Mm -hmm. and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more Mm -hmm. till a thousand years shall be fulfilled. Yep. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. That's when he comes up the camp of the uh, the saint, when he comes up to the camps of the saints or whatever and try to, uh, he convinces a few people to go with them, all right? And then the fire of the Lord of the Father, the ancient of days, he puts an end to that real quick, okay? But read our lesson, 
um, the millennial reign, and you'll get a, a clearer understanding of that. But he says, uh, you know, no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loose for a little season. Go ahead, brother, verse 4. And I saw thrones that they sat upon them, mm -hmm. and the judgment was given unto them. Mm -hmm. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus mm -hmm. and for the word of God, mm -hmm. and which had not worshipped the beast, yes. neither his image, mm -hmm. neither had received his mark upon their foreheads yep. or their hands. Mm -hmm. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, because a thousand years to the Lord is a day, and a day is a thousand years. And so that's why that millennial reign is a thousand years which is also his rest okay all right that that's going to be the completion of seven thousand years that's another lesson go ahead brother but the rest of the dead live mm -hmm. not again mm -hmm. until a thousand years were finished mm -hmm. this is the first resurrection okay go ahead blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection mm -hmm. on such of the second death hath no power mm -hmm. but they shall be priests of god mm -hmm. and of christ mm -hmm. and shall reign with him a thousand years so the priests of god and christ shall reign with him for a thousand years and we know that all the nations and all languages and all tongues are going to come up to the mountain of the Lord and worship before him and their sacrifices will be accepted of him. Amen. So I hope you all been edified with this lesson and until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things.